Abraham probably thought he was at the final stage of his life and that nothing important was ever going to happen to him when God showed up to give him the biggest opportunity he had ever given to a mortal. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 7 AMP. Now, in Haran, the Lord had said to Abraham, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you abundantly, and make your name great, exalted, and distinguished, and you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others, and I will bless, that is, do good for, and benefit those who bless you, and I will curse, that is, subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, or has contempt for you. And in you all the families, the nations of the earth will be blessed. So Abram departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him, and Lot, his nephew, left with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions which they had acquired, and the people, servants, which they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem, to the great terebinth, or oak tree, in Morah. Now the Canaanites were in the land at that time. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there to honor the Lord who had appeared to him. By this call into a great assignment and a covenant with El Shaddai, God was opening our eyes to the reality that life can be full of so much possibility, positive impact, purpose, and hope, regardless of our age, abilities, and negative experiences. Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 18, AMP. So Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot, his nephew, with him into the Negev, the south country of Judah. Now Abram was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. He journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, where he had first built an altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord in prayer. But Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that is, sustain all their grazing and water needs, while they lived near one another, for their possessions were too great for them to stay together. And there was strife and quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. Now the Canaanite and the Perizzite were living in the land at that same time, making grazing of the livestock difficult. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife and disagreement between you and me, nor between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, because we are relatives. Is not the entire land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right, or if you choose the right, then I will go to the left. So Lot looked and saw that the valley of the Jordan was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was all like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zor, at the south end of the Dead Sea. Then Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and he traveled east. So they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, and Lot settled in the cities of the valley and camped as far as Sodom and lived there. But the men of Sodom were extremely wicked and sinful against the Lord, unashamed in their open sin before him. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had left him, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing, northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see I will give you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as numerous as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the grains of dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be counted. Arise, walk, make a thorough reconnaissance around in the land, through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. Then Abram broke camp and moved his tent, and came and settled by the grove of the great terebinths, oak trees, of Mamre the Amorite, which are in Hebron. And there he built an altar to honor the Lord. 
It's easy to disqualify ourselves from a life of greatness in God and for His purposes because of our past or other limitations that we have observed in our lives. But all that God truly requires when He reaches out to us is simply a heart that responds with obedience. And this is why Abraham is still regarded as the father of faith today, not because he was young, charming, or eloquent, but because God told him his life meant so much more and he could be more than what he had earlier envisaged, he rose and took faith steps in line with God's will. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18, AMP says, Now after these things, God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he answered, Here I am. God said, Take now your son, your only son of promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and then he got up and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day of travel, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man and I will go over there and worship God, and we will come back to you. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac his son, and he took the fire, the fire pot, in his own hand and the sacrificial knife, and the two of them walked on together. And Isaac said to Abraham, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two walked on together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bound Isaac his son and placed him on the altar, on top of the wood. Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Here I am. The Lord said, Do not reach out with a knife in your hand against the boy, and do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God with reverence and profound respect, since you have not withheld from me your son, your only son of promise. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering, ascending sacrifice, instead of his son. So Abraham named that place, The Lord Will Provide. And it is said to this day, On the mountain of the Lord it will be seen and provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, by myself, on the basis of who I am, I have sworn an oath, declares the Lord, that since you have done this thing and have not withheld from me your son, your only son of promise, indeed I will greatly bless you and I will greatly multiply your seed like the stars of the heavens and like the sand on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies by conquering them. Through your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have heard and obeyed my voice. True to his words, God confirmed everything that he had spoken to Abraham because from being an old man who was just idly spending his last days in one corner of the world, he became a man that kings feared and nations envied. Genesis chapter 21 verses 22 through 34 AMP. Now at that time Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do, so now swear to me here by God that you will not deal unfairly with me by breaking any agreements we have, or with my son, or with my descendants. But as I have treated you with kindness, you shall do the same to me and to the land in which you have sojourned, temporarily lived. And Abraham said, I will swear. Then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well of water which the servants of Abimelech had violently seized from him. Abimelech said, I do not know who did this thing. Indeed, you did not tell me, and I did not hear of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant, a binding agreement. 
Then Abraham set apart seven ewe lambs of the flock, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set apart? Abraham said, You are to accept these seven ewe lambs from me as a witness for me that I dug this well. Therefore that place was called Beersheba, well of the oath, or well of the seven, because there the two of them swore an oath. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, got up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord in prayer, the eternal God. And Abraham lived as a resident alien in the land of the Philistines for many days. Abimelech and the commander of his army came to Abraham to sign a peace treaty, just because they discovered that God was with Abraham and it showed by the dimension of success Abraham walked in. They saw Abraham as a man not to be toyed with. They looked upon him as one to be treated with respect and dignity. He even did so much with his life in his latter days compared to his young and strong days. He became the foundation of a people that were chosen and called out and named by the name of Jehovah. And it is upon the foundation of this covenant with God that the new covenant in Jesus is drawn from. Romans chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. This is why we cannot afford to neglect God's call or instructions to us, because there is always much more ahead of us when we are walking with God than we can ever dream of. Let us pray. Thank you, good and mindful God, for your grace that keeps running from me. Thank you for every time you have given me specific instructions, because this shows that you have a plan for me that is bigger than mine. In the name of Jesus, I ask for grace to obey and respond appropriately every time that you speak to me. Amen.